Totino's. Start the music right. Totino's, Totino's. How did you know? Totino's. Thank you. Feminine pizza bag. Woo-woo. Oh, no, wait. Hey, it's the Pizza Party Podcast, and we're together, think, for now. We don't know what's going on outside, but hey, I'm Pan Pizza. Who are you? We're physically um, recording together in the same room. Uh-oh. Ignore the different level of qualities of Mike. That's an illusion. Yeah, we're well, sitting... We're, we're, we're all six feet apart. No, we're sitting, we're like, so, hunched so up dedicated. together. We're so dedicated to this joke that we bought four separate microphones and are recording into four separate computers and editing out all the tracks. Yeah. Just so it sounds like we are all recording from a different place, even though we're not. Nah. Yeah. It's, nah. This joke is fucking stupid. Uh, it's I'm all Nolan. a lie. Uh, I am here uh, with uh, Me. Jim. I'm Pan Pizza. Hey, I'm here too. I'm Jim. And, and we I'm also, also have... Pan Pizza. <laughs> You're as tasty as a pan pizza. Hey! Ooh, there we go. Yeah, I like that. That's a spicy meatball of a start. That's a Dude, spicy meatball. I should have done it with an accent. That's a spicy meatball. That was it. What? That was, that, that was really bad. You should apologize. To I'm all literally Italians. the worst when it comes to accents, so please. The Italian yeah, can... community would like an apology. I, Izzy, would like to formally apologize to all the Italian community. Actually, I hate I hate Italians. Don't Whoa. apologize. Wow. The Italian fan- fandom. Well, yeah. now Nolan needs to apologize. Yeah, so I ain't apologizing for shit, bitch. I'm waiting for that call out post. Nolan call out posts about Italians. Italians, I can see. Italians, Italians have had too had it too good for too long. See, you're not the first one to say it. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's not. Nah. So podcast. Hey. Yeah. Um, Let's list off the Italians we know that that does not pertain to Mario. We're not doing that. Oh, Luigi. No. Oh, that that Stop. does not, not pertain to Mario. Wait. Wait, oh, so you mean Wario. Wario's They're Italian, all pertaining right? to Mario. None of those count. I think Wario would disagree with that statement. Yeah. <laughs> Waluigi. Oh, you can say that about that, because I thought that was like a Wario's brother, but it turns out they're not related, and he's just some guy that shows up, and that's really who he is. Yeah, like the Smash Brothers like trophies have like this weird, ominous thing about Wario and Waluigi. None of it makes any sense. Nah, I mean, like, if I you like want to think that dig deeper, w- Waluigi can't. is like Wario's like he Wario like hypnotized him into being Waluigi, and it's like I like you know. to think that he's a paid actor. Like Wario's like fuck, I need a Luigi, and this like <laughs> gave someone fifty bucks. Yeah, basically, just like hey, you wanna you wanna pretend to be my brother? It's, it's it'll be fun. That, what, what was that app where PewDiePie paid people to be anti-Semitic? Whatever oh, that app was. Fiber. Yeah. All you need was is a okay. fiber bar. Yeah, probably so, use that. So let's talk about something other than this dumb bullshit. What do we got? Uh, I, I think one of the most pressing things, because this is apparently an animation podcast, is that the Dragon Slayer movie fucked up. Yeah, what the fuck, Netflix? I had faith in you. Well, we can't talk about it. We're an animation podcast. That's live action oh, now. That's, that's, I well, suppose. That's, that's part of it. That's it our is. hands are tied. You no, know, you could talk off. about it because it's the first thing Don Blue's been involved in that is actually going to get made in like... Since, since 2001 yeah since pre-9-11 so <laughs> yeah <laughs> why, why is it your frame of reference for time jim i mean name <laughs> another notable thing that happened in 2001 oh okay the gorillas album yeah it was post the gorillas album <laughs> yeah see thank you there was Actually, some good... does anyone know the date the first gorillas album came out versus titan a i think Did 99 titan a even come out in 2001 it's no post space odyssey Gorillas. Oh, no, Titan A.E. came out in 2000. I am very wrong. Oh, let's see. So that was pre-9. Pre- January 15th, 2001, Wikipedia launched. Damn. Wow. You, you didn't call it the right thing. Oh, sorry. Uh, me, me and Jim have a thing right now. Uh, the Wikipedia. <laughs> Thank you. Out. Yeah, <laughs> it was 2001. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, Freddy got fingered. Came hot out. Fucking mess of an episode already. Yeah, the, P- the PS2 came out in 2001, I think, and the GameCube maybe. 
you know, it was a good year. So anyway, it's been a yeah. while for Mr. Don Bluth, and he's back. Um, yeah, he, he also he also had like an Anastasia musical. Say, I don't, was what? he involved in that, or did he just like get a check, or did they just say you don't have any? Rights? Bold of you to assume that animators would get residuals for the work they made. <laughs> no, that's true. I mean, well, that's actually a good thing because almost everyone who's written a Disney movie that's been had a live action remake has not been involved. So this is actually a positive in a way. Is it? I mean, I don't know. It, it sounds like it could be bullshit. Although I like Pan's idea hmm. uh, for what they should do with it. I also think if they were smart, they would do that to the original Dragon's Lair game. It's put that on Netflix. Oh yeah, to make like you. a Vandersnatch type of thing where it's interactive on Netflix. I think that's why they went live action is because like it'd be easier to make all sorts of different variants to the uh, story, you know? Honestly, I'm kind of shocked they didn't just release the original on Netflix. Yeah, cause... no, that, that's what I mean. Yeah. Because it's basically a DVD game anyways. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. They, they should do that. I think the thing with that animated movie is, well, one, Don Bluth clearly is involved with Netflix and, and in, a, in a high, a pretty big project. So he's at least in the room with like some of their bigger executives. So if he wanted to do an animated movie... I feel like he could, but I, and this might be like a little ageist, but maybe he's sort of like, I'm too old at this point. I don't really want to do this, but he hasn't made any statements on it. So it's just this thing where we're all like, what's going on with the animated thing? Like, well, if you want it, if he didn't want to do it, then why do you start the Kickstarter? Do you just want easy Kickstarter money? Well, no, but the Kickstarter was how it many was for years a pitch. Ago? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was for, for a pitch. pitch. No, I got that, but, like, why create a pitch if he wasn't, like, willing to direct? I think, like, if the pitch, he assumed the pitch would happen, like, because how long ago was that Kickstarter? It wasn't, like, a year ago. 2015? Yeah, that was, maybe he thought, oh, I could do this in two years, but five years later, he's like, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm being ages, but I think that's a real thing, you know, he, he could have just said, I can't commit to this at this point, but they'll make this thing, and... You know, but I am surprised because like Netflix is making a Glenn Keane movie. They're 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 they do support small animation, so I'm a little shocked they wouldn't do a Dragon's Lair movie, especially because it was so big in The Last Stranger Things. Too. Well, I think um, what if it's just like a jumping off point where they're gonna do this live action movie and maybe they'll also make like a 30 minute short or whatever. The Don Bluth mean, cinematic universe. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> they have two He Man's in development. Two different Wait, what? animations. They have two different animated shows, and potentially they're going to buy the live action movie, so that'd be three things. Hmm. But because they have the Kevin Smith one, which takes place after the original, and then they have a reboot one, which is separate. Hmm. Like a weird. Weird. Why are they banking so hard on He Man? It's He Man. I think because She Ra did well, right? Yeah, She Ra did really well for those guys. Yeah, I love She Ra. That was DreamWorks, though. So. Yeah, but DreamWorks through Netflix. I think yeah, Dream... I'm not sure who, what studio through Netflix is doing He Man, but they do have two. I mean, I think that they've announced. On Didn't DreamWorks just buy a whole bunch of '80s properties and Mattel properties? Sort of, something like yeah, that. I don't know I the whole. So. Deal yeah. That. Hmm. But hey, but I, I don't know. I'm like, I, I was never big into He Man, but what I was big into was what came before. It was called Thundar the Barbarian, and. It was a major influence on Samurai Jack, and literally nobody, except like two people, ever mentioned it. Was was that Not one? Three. Of the, was that one of the ones that Alex Toth designed? Um, I don't know, but there are hints of Thundar and Samurai Jack, and that's all I know. And also Duck yeah. Dodgers. I used to watch Thundar when uh, TBS used to play it during oh, the God. summer at like eight thirty in the morning. I was so into Thundar. <laughs> oh boy like i remember like watching it like i came home after watching the sam raimi spider-man 3 and at 3 a.m i managed to just watch thundar and i was like what the fuck is this and i thought it was so horrendously cheesy that it was great oh i didn't realize i'm looking at the wikipedia thank you and um <laughs> the <laughs> I didn't realize it's a post-apocalyptic. It takes place in thirty nine ninety four. Yeah, it's a future post-apocalyptic. It's it's ahead of its time. There were there there ain't no uh, post-apocalyptic cartoons back then. Yeah. What when what year was this? Like eighty three or so. It's uh, fucking 
No, fucking Fist can... of the North Star was like Shut that, wasn't up. It? 80 to 81. Anime don't count. This is American <laughs> cartoons by uh who what are the guys named? Ruby Spears. That's yeah, them. Yeah, Ruby Spears. Yeah. The kind of like sub Hanna Barbera in a way. Yeah. They're still around. Oh, Hanna Barbera's already kind of like low quality, so you're saying like it's like a step down from that? I guess well, no, so. they, they came from they were the the people who made Ruby Spears um came from Hanna Barbera and then sort of took on that mantle because Hanna Barbera dominated like animation at that time. So they were like, hey, if we make Hanna Barbera, but at a different company, we can have a quarter of Saturday morning and they can have the other seventy five percent. Uh, I believe yeah. they also created Scooby Doo, like the design or something, or they, li- I don't know. Uh, the, Ruby Spears and Hanna Barbera were friends, but they also, you know, they used to work there, so they probably just went, "Hey, are we cool?" And they're like, "Not really, but you know, we need work. We need other people to work on this." So, you know, some hmm. it was something like that. I, but I think they were buddies to a certain extent. Yeah. I don't know the history, so if someone in the comments wants to get mad. Uh, yeah. Go at it. If we have any Ruby Spears historians, please let us know in the comments please. below. Please, all three I'm, of you. I'm on. I mean, I'm, I'm on Wikipedia, and I'm now realizing the original Scooby Doo series was called Scooby Doo. Where are you? Like it's in the fucking title. I haven't really thought about that. Our donator wants to promote the animated web cartoon Blood Thing. Watch Blood Thing, linked below. Yeah, but it was in the title card. I mean, I just yeah. called it Scooby-Doo. I didn't call it Scooby-Doo, where are you? Who, who does that? Weirdos do. That's like calling, uh, that's like saying the regular show or something, you know? That's like saying no, code name. No, it's not. No, no, it's no. like, no, hang on. It's like saying code name, Kids Next Door. Who actually says the word code name? Huh? I do. That's weird. Don't do that. It's pointless. I mean, but it is in yeah. the theme song. He's like, Scooby Dooby Doo. Well, where are you? It's not like, well, it's a we lyric. Need some help. It, you gotta need rhyme help. a bunch of words together. I'm not gonna, like, assume that's part of it. <laughs> I like, I like your lack of ability to, like, acknowledge things. It's like, the show's fault in this scenario. I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> like how dare this show? Who invented just because Scooby-Doo. you're not observant. I mean, look, like Scooby Doo. Just it doesn't matter if it's in the theme song. Like I'm trying to think of other lyrical based theme songs, and it literally like spells it out for you. It's like if I <laughs> if we started calling Ducktales Woohoo. Like nobody called it Ducktales Woohoo. I, I actually it's not called Ducktales Woohoo. Exactly. Ducktales colon Woohoo. Because if I heard I, Ducktales I, Woohoo, I'm not gonna assume the whole show is called Ducktales Woohoo. It's I just actually, fucking Ducktales. The screen, Ducktales Woohoo. I, and the I title actually, card. I actually think with the title card, Scooby Doo, where are you? Comes up, they sing the word Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? Yeah, wh- why isn't it just called Scooby Dooby Doo, <laughs> where are you, huh? Because that's too many words. Let's, you know, the kids. They should have just got... called it Scooby Doo. Fucking it's idiots. The dumbest hill to die on. <laughs> Wait, here, here's the real question Is there ever been a show just called no. Scooby Doo? It's always like Scooby Doo and some other crap. There was one called Scoob. That's tr- that is true. That's the movie list of Scooby Doo movies. Let me show. Let me look that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm like currently looking at the list on Wikipedia right. as well. Uh... There's only three nice. There's only three uh, theatrical films, but then there's all those VHS ones. Nope. And the TV movies. Just this. Right? Just the movie, the 2002 movie Scooby Doo. That's the mm. only time it's ever been referred to as just Scooby Doo. Yeah. So you're wrong and dumb. It smell funny. What a... Hey guys, how about this conversation? It's fucking dumb. Fuck you. Oh well, let's let's rant about the other Scooby Doo shows. How about the new Scooby Doo movies? Remember Sunny and Cher were on there. Yeah, same with the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, I just seen the Pussycats, Speed Buggy. Um, I'm currently looking at the list. The Addams Family, The Three Stooges, <laughs> Don Knotts, the most important one. Apparently, Boomerang has like their own new version of. Uh, Sco- the new Scooby Doo movies with their own guest stars. Hang on, where's uh? Wait, really? Yeah, yeah. They on. have modern day versions. Scooby Doo, we... guess who is what it's called? They got let's see. Um, that's a, it's not a comic series. Uh, they got no, fucking it's... Urkel. They got Penn and Teller, Weird Al. 
Um, yeah. Oh, well, the weirdest thing is that that's modern. Like that came out like what last year, and yeah. they did an episode with Urkel and Robo Urkel, as oh, if kids sweet. know what the fuck that is. Yes. Oh, and also they got um, Kevin Conroy to play Batman and Mark Hamill. Whoa. And they got wait, they got Ricky Gervais to play himself. I'm just <laughs> oh, confused God. about that. And Jim Gaffigan. What, Let's see. And who runs the oh, show? Oh man, they got <laughs> Abraham Lincoln himself. <laughs> Keenan Keenan Thompson. Yes. I remember I remember the episode where Ricky Gervais said, Are you triggered, Velma? And Velma was like really upset, and then Ricky was like laughing for five minutes and it was like completely uncut. I George some of these I'm just like, what? Who came up with this idea? I don't this is so strange. Well, the idea of Scooby meeting celebrities with the celebrities bringing in people. That that's not like a terrible idea. The problem is, is that like, it's such a weird mix mash of like stuff that's somewhat relevant and things that haven't been. Yeah, they're trying oh. to indoctrinate kids. It's fine. At the bottom of this, they have that, but they haven't aired yet. But the 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 list is amazing because they have Steve Buscemi, yes. Jeff Dunham, Jeff Foxworthy, Michael <laughs> Slater. Jeff- Jeff Dunham? Jeff Dunham, yes. Jeff Dunham, Mark McDowell. I don't know who the Hex Girls are. I think they're a thing. No, no, no. The Hex Girls are a... uh, That's weird that they're counted as a celebrity because they are an invention of Scooby-Doo. Well, if the gorillas are a celebrity, the Hex Girls can be too... Yeah, why aren't they the gorillas only exist on there? outside of Scooby Doo media though? They're only in uh, a couple of the movies and Someday. the uh, rebooted show. Someday. No, it's like Aki Ross from uh, Final Fantasy Spirits Within. They're digital actresses now. Yeah, yeah. This is mm. the future. Christian Slater is going to be in. <laughs> Who's awesome. that again? I, I I recognize that name, but I'm like, who that again? Do you ever see Heather's? Yeah. Alone in the no, dark. No, he's the he's the boyfriend in Heather's. Yay. He's, uh, he's also in Breaking In, this, like, really great sitcom that aired on Fox, but no one knows about it. Yeah. yeah I've never heard of this. I love Breaking In. That might be, can we, can, for our little side project, can we do TV shows? <laughs> How, if it's, like, six episodes. If, we can do one season. If it's not a lot of episodes. I'm going to look this up. I'm going to look this up. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about Man, on this show. This Bro, oh, I found it. Breaking In 2011 to 2012. Uh, Fox canceled the series. However, oh, it did have two seasons. I'll watch season one, seven episodes. Season one's the only season to watch because, like, they completely they took out half the cast, replaced with other people, added an annoying actress into it, and it's not as good. Also, we totally derailed this conversation. From sorry, Scooby-Doo. I'm sorry. We did. We did. <laughs> Scooby Dooby Doo. Who are you? No, it's where are you? Okay. Who are you? Why do you I, exist, Scooby? I, I think who are you, uh, Scooby-Doo, who are you, should be his existential art movie. Where he just the like, finale? Yeah, he's just like sitting with, with, with Shaggy and they're old. And he's like, he's like all, those, all those monsters, most of them were like, you know, just the rich real- businessmen. That's who haunts America. No, no. He looks in the mirror and he what? goes, wait, I'm a wog? <laughs> like, <laughs> like Scooby. The real monster was a man. Oh. <laughs> I like this. This is great. And Daphne's dead and Velma's alive. Oh, man. It's like just old. I don't know. I, Sorry, I guess they'll replace them there. with those two guys from uh, the 13 Ghosts, you know, the little kid and uh, random lady, whatever her name was. Daphne? No. Wait, I'm trying to remember. Wasn't. Who was. Daphne was in that. Hang on. I got to look up 13 ghosts oh the 13 ghosts of scooby-doo with vincent price they have flim flam scrappy doo daphne shaggy in a red shirt and scooby okay. did, anyone, did anyone see the tv movie sequel of that yeah Which, oh it wasn't it oh uh, no that or was the made, direct to dvd thing i didn't see it that was like 30 one, years later yeah it, yeah, came it out was made year. bad here's the worst part it was made by the i guess the same I don't know, the same continuation of that damn Zombie Island sequel. It, it fits into that where they're like, yeah, there are no monsters. We're retconning all that. I don't know if it's None of it the makes same. sense anymore. Because, nah. like, it's both a sequel to um, 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo where Flim Flam and Vincent Bright's characters, Vincent Van Gogh is in it. But, like, Shaggy, that, uh, Sha- you know, Shaggy and Daphne don't age. But Flim Flam has been aged up. 
That's, oh. that's weird. And there's so many weird little things. Like, it's canon now that, like, during the 13th Ghost of Scooby-Doo, where Shaggy and Daphne and uh, Scooby and Scrabby went on separate adventures, uh, they have canonically made it to where Fred and Velma both went to the same or similar, similar like, close, uh, like, summer camps. And, like, that, that's been, like, randomly, like, put into each version. So, like, the, um, the Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated show that's that's canon and in the movie series with the weird rebooted zombie island that's canon i don't know it's weird uh none of it works i hate it yeah i'm uh, way too worked up i'm sure the Sco- scooby do like weird directed dvd things scooby like, do should re- will redeem itself hopefully with that scoob movie if it doesn't get delayed until like next year or whatever well- I don't think it has a date. It doesn't have a date right now. I mean, it's it was normally May, but who knows if that's yeah, still May happening. May doesn't exist as a month anymore. <laughs> no. I mean, the um, only movie this year that came out and was financially successful was the Sonic movie, and that's it. Can't wait for the Oscars, <laughs> no, man. No, Bad Boys 3, the highest grossing movie of the year, I'll have you know. What? <laughs> no. Well, that's it. That's the Oscars. That's the two things can, that can be on this year. I, I just want invisible man to sweep the oscars um just oh, man nothing but the oscars or nothing but invisible man do you think they're going to like uh change the rules of the oscars so it includes like streaming so that like disney can still have a chance they've they've actually they've talked about it but um yeah. there's not an official thing but they've talked about possibly just not having one at the beginning of next year and lumping this into that year, which they've done wow. before. When oh. Cowards. What issues. a mess. Cowards, right? But but um, I will say that, so everything got moved recently, um, and I looked at the release slate, and I was like, you guys are acting like the Oscars are happening like normal. So in my mind, it probably is still going to happen. It'll just be like something will be able to ascend far higher because there'll be like no competition, which I think will be amazing to see like, Sonic the Hedgehog win best visual effects as a as a major fuck you at the end. <laughs> oh boy! I I love what looks like Disney was like, all right, what's not going to be successful? That's going on Disney Plus now, and then anything we think still has a chance, we'll just push it along. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that. Yeah, I mean, Artemis Fowl. It's also that like there's no release dates, so it's like they don't. They're like something has to go, and Artemis Fowl just got bumped, and then onward. I mean, they weren't going to make their money back anyway. I mean, onward made. I think. Birds of Prey made more than. Oh man! Why do well, people hate Birds of Prey? I don't understand. I don't. I don't hate Birds of Prey. I don't, I'm not in love with it, but I don't hate it. It's just interesting because that's a big Pixar movie. For that to make less break? than no uh, onward, onward is a big Pixar movie that it would do less is is interesting. I think Birds, and I'm excited. Did you hear about that they're doing one of Ivy and Harley Quinn? Yeah, yeah I heard that. But the thing is, like, I saw, like, half of the comments responding to it were, like, angry white men, specifically, yeah. like, being like, oh, well, well, the first one failed. You keep doing it until it works. And I'm like, I thought the first one was good. I enjoyed Dude. it. No, I, I had fun. I mean, I'm not, like, I didn't love it, but I will say I've never related to a movie harder. I would <laughs> I would kill someone for a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. I want to like, know. I want to retract my statement from the previous podcast where I talked about how, you know, fuck that thing. I understand it now. What? And I appreciate the, the bacon, egg, and cheese, the, the specific thing. Like, I, I saw the movie, and I saw how good it is, and now I understand. Oh, I, see, if there's ever, if there's a New York, by the time you can come and visit, bacon, <laughs> and cheese. Jim turns into Kurt Russell. Oh, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I already have my apocalypse outfit picked, because I don't want, you know, when shit goes down, I don't want to be like mohawk, no mohawk. Like, you got to get that stuff down right All now. Right, I, Okay, question for the, everyone on the podcast. Um, what type of uh, post-apocalyptic person are you? Are you like BDSM gear? You like, know. What, I you just, know what, what's the spectrum? I just want to say that I'm like uh, watching like uh, with the sound off, what's called Final Space on Adult Swim right now. And it's just characters like all pissing on each other. It's literally like it's going on for like five minutes. Just characters literally pissing streams all over each other. It's really odd. I'm not, yeah. I don't know. It just happened. So but Pan, speaking, going back to BDSM, go on. So Pan's <laughs> going to be the person that post apocalyptic movie where, like, we have to go save Pan. Oh, we'll man. kick open the door and he'll be like, what? What's going on? Oh, what? man. 
<laughs> but I've so just you... been playing games, making these videos. We're like, Pan, there's no internet. What are you talking about? They're... He's the <laughs> Shaun of the Dead stoner type. They're pissing yeah. on each other, people. This is weird. <laughs> We'll, Just have, like, priorities. we'll have guns. No one will be driving the, the truck with the sand that everyone thinks is the oil tanker. Spoilers. And then, uh, you know. It's seriously like a water hose of just piss just squirting out of them. I like how this podcast is so un- uninteresting to you, Pan. You want to talk about what you're watching. It, I'm watching with the sound off, but it's just like, what is going on in this show? It's just pissing. Wait, is Final Space good? I've never watched it. Well, I, I gave it like a lukewarm review because I was annoyed by the voice, but a lot of people were saying like, hey, give it a chance and try to get through. He, his voice gets a lot better after like three or four episodes. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I've heard good things from it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This Neat. sucks. Whoa. Did anyone see Smiling Friends? I oh, did. I yeah, did yeah. I did too. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, explain explain what that is because I'm not all versed in Newgrounds uh, stuff. I don't know the animators that well. I Does do. anyone know? You know what's the deal yeah. with them? So so Zach or Psycho Pebbles um, is the the one I know. He he's on uh, Oni plays a lot, and I watch that a little too often. And like almost all of the little bits, the characters that he voiced are just all the same like four voices he does on Oni plays. Like uh, I mean, that's I voice acting. Comment, right well no it's literally the same like reoccurring things that he just does like almost like on a daily basis it seems like based off of the the videos i watch but um like i get it like like i thought it was really fun uh i enjoyed the overall plot but like there's kind of like an added element of like knowing that guy well enough from his like content that he creates that you can kind of see all the tropes Mm -hmm. that makes any sense yeah yeah um, but I don't really know how to describe it. It's just surreal, like very intimate humor that he himself <laughs> likes. I mean, it's just full of like all these strange, like little animations. Like my favorite part was, I don't know, the character just bumps into someone and suddenly this guy just turns into like this rotoscoped character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was funny. Yeah, it, it, but... it was part of like a Adult Swim's April Fool's because like during like a like randomly at like 12 on the start of April Fool's, they just played all these, like, new episodes of, like, Rick and Morty and uh, Primal and and this pilot, Smiling Friends, it was called, right? Yeah. Yeah. A new 12-ounce mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, that too. A bunch of stuff. But it went on until 3 a.m. I, yeah. I saw the Primal one. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just, it was, like, trying to describe the f- Smiling, crap, I keep forgetting the name Smiling Friends. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, because, like, I just love how odd it is. Like, there's just some random purple kid in, like, the family scene just running in the background. And it's like, you can't really describe why it's funny. It just is. Or, or they go to the theme park yeah. for Doug. And Doug's... they don't explain why he's important or why. But it does feel like that when you go to, like, a, a place and they're like, this person made this place and is really important. And suddenly you're like, am I supposed to care about this thing? I don't no. know. Who the hell was Walt Disney? Nobody knows. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, Disney ain't <laughs> shit. Or the, I, I like the Red Letter Media guy in it. it was cool. Hmm. Yeah, I know. That was fun. I, <laughs> I like how essentially it was the same drawing throughout the entire thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could actually see that show blowing up, to be honest, but because it's sort of weird and dark, but also accessible. Like, yeah. I could explain that. It's not like it reminds me of Aqua Teen a little bit, which was uh, obviously a breakout too, but. Mm-hmm. um. If they put this after Rick and Morty, I could see, like, people being like, you know, have you seen Smiling Friends? (laughs) And I'm like, yes. (laughs) Don't talk to me. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. But uh, we got other topics. We got Tiger King. I'm Joe Exotic. Purpose of this video today is to let you know who I am. First thing is, I am gay. I'm a real American, fight for the rights of every man. Did you see Tiger King? No, but apparently uh, Nolan and Izzy did. Yeah. I did too. I've seen, I've seen half of it. So you, you know about Carol Baskin. And that ba- Wait, you're not saying her full name. That bitch, Carol Baskin. <laughs> yeah, that bitch, Carol Baskin, who's probably fucking insane and evil. <laughs> you could see in her eyes. 
yeah, no, her eyes give it away. <laughs> Explain what this is, because I'm I'm out of the loop. Okay, so um, Tiger King is a documentary about this guy who originally was like looking into like the snake trade and shit. And this guy comes and buys a snake and he's like, hey, you want to see what I have in my van? And he just has a fucking white tiger. And then it goes down this rabbit hole of like these uh, three tiger like wranglers um, who are all like fucking out for each other. And the rabbit hole just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. It just it like I'm it's seven episodes long. It's a limited docuseries, but it's insane. And, and like and like it just keeps escalating to the point where it's just like. It can't get any crazier, and then it just does. Well, so like, it's basically about Joe Exotic, this like personality. Yeah, is the best way I can explain. Like, it's a polyamorous gay tiger king, like tiger lord, <laughs> lord of the yeah. tigers. Yeah, yeah. Where he owns like this giant like zoo, and mm-hmm. then uh, it's you say there's three. They kind of mention the third guy, and you find out that like he's also he's he like collects tigers and women apparently because he has like a bajillion wives whoa but that guy really doesn't play into it all that much it's really just this feud between joe exotic and carol that bitch carol baskin (laughs) which is uh like they both own like places that house tigers but carol baskin rescues them versus joe just kind of like breeds tiger babies so people will come play with them and there's just this ongoing feud between two the two the two of them and it's revealed in the first episode so i don't feel like it's not spoiling but he actually legitimately tries to kill her by hiring a like hitman and so that's what kind of it initiates this like particular thing and nolan's right the more you watch it the more it's just this insane unraveling of like these giant pet collectors i guess it's yeah like- I didn't want to. I, I I kind of kept my explanation vague to not give anything away. But yeah, it's as just, he as he goes more in depth, it's just watching huge egos battle each other and like rub like like the biggest egos you can imagine. Biggest egos you can imagine. They're all insane people who like have a fuck a ton of money are wrangling tigers and other huge exotic animals. And it just and it gets to the point where they clash so hard, things get insane. <laughs> I mean, like, because you probably have heard of Joe Exotic at some point, because, like, again, he was an internet personality for a bit. There was, like, yeah. this stunt where he was running for president. There was, um... <laughs> no. He was he had, like... John... What's that? He was on John Oliver a lot. Yeah. A couple years ago. I feel yeah. so out of the loop, like, a character... Like, this feels like a, a TV episode where a character doesn't know anything about this, and suddenly all the other characters are like, what, you haven't heard of this character that wasn't introduced prior in the series, but he's a big deal? What are you, <laughs> stupid? It's like that. Also, also Bone Crusher is a lion that was, like, has a bunch of uh, little doggies, like, uh, for, the wiener dogs, I forgot what their names, Dashus? No. <laughs> yeah. Dashuns? Dashin, I don't know how to pronounce oh. the English language, but like it has a little doggies, and I know a lot of people know about that. Just didn't really like realize no. it was associated with Joe Exotic. I don't know that mm. at all. Neither hey, do you I. You only know anything from 2001 and <laughs> like the GameCube. Hey, hey, I saw I, I I saw the other documentary. Don't fuck with cats. I'm in, I'm in the loop with that one. Did anyone watch that in here? I, I saw it. it. I've heard it's super fucked up and like. Yeah. Yeah very uncensored oh well, I, well they don't show the cats being killed thankfully see don't I, they play I, the audio oh yeah they I yeah can't, i can't watch that in a house I, with three cats i just I, I want them to be on my side you know? <laughs> I, yeah i can i can handle hearing like people getting hurt or whatever but like when it's like cats or dogs i'm like oh god no please don't yeah maybe you, yeah you probably don't want to watch this documentary at I, all i was gonna watch it and then someone's like no there's like cat abuse and i was like yep can't do that so yeah that's, that's yeah. like sort of a line and and i don't want my cats to like you know they were cool during when i watched cannibal holocaust but i feel like that <laughs> was as far as i'm gonna put yeah they like uh no it wasn't that it was blood sucking freaks and there was a part and one of my cats like like got like visibly sort of upset oh because she was like she would just watch tv and she was like looking at me like what the fuck are you watching right now <laughs> like this is this is like I, she just looked up and i think it was like someone drinking blood out of someone's head near their brain something oh. like that i don't know blood sucking freaks is weird 
Sorry. Yeah, my cat, my cat Melly, when we played a um, video of like this uh, this husky like whining about having to go for a walk, she perked up and looked at the TV and was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, they Why are you watching this. They don't. Sometimes they get into TV, or like my one cat who liked uh, was a problem solvers. So, wow, is your yeah. cat stupid? <laughs> you know what's funny? I actually messaged someone I knew who worked on it. And the day after, I was like, look, Buster, it's Problem Solvers. He looked at me like, I'm a cat. I don't fucking watch cartoons. No. What's, what's your problem? <laughs> and he even said that. And I was like, you can talk. And then he just stopped. He didn't talk after that. It was the weirdest thing. What did you eat that night? Just curious. <laughs> it's for science. <laughs> Peyote? <don't> why? <laughs> speaking, speaking of eating, Jim, where the fuck is my hot sauce? Didn't you t- told me it was expired and not to send it to you? What? No, I didn't. What are you talking about? Did yeah, it say it expired? Yeah, it expired. We had this conversation at Moca. I swear to God. We did. I, I can't tell who's gaslighting who now. No, I, yeah. so we really have we have had this conversation, and then you said to go fuck myself, and then I said agreed, and then that was it. I want new hot sauce. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll work out this hot sauce dilemma. This, this hot sauce. Okay, also for those who don't know, because this is like a completely personal conversation I've injected into this stupid show. <gasps> I bought some hot sauce from this uh, trauma guy. Trauma. Trauma. Yeah, um, I don't know what his name is, but the hot sauce was really fucking good. And I bought it and I couldn't take it on the flight home because, you know... Uh, TSA is awful. So I was like, hey, Jim, can you mail this to me? I'll pay you back and everything. He's like, yeah, sure. I was like, cool, thanks. And then it, he, I reminded him a couple times. He was like, oh, I'll get it to you. I'm sorry. And then at Momocon, he's like, apparently, he's like, oh, yo, that expired. Bitch! So, I'm yeah. Sorry. It was very good hot sauce. And I mean, I'm sure now, the, the, the expiration date is a suggestion, you know. I'm sure it can go a little like a week or two after... This was like literally over a year ago. Damn. Yeah. Sorry. Noah. Have you ever eaten expired anything before? You know, I milk. Oh boy, that's bad. You can go a, a little bit on some products, but I would look it up if if someone is going to their fridge trying to eat something that they yeah. think is okay. I mean, I tr- I got some like popcorn from like a year prior, and I was like, ugh, this is sweet popcorn, right? But I guess I'll eat it, and I realized no, it's not sweet popcorn. It's just expired from a year ago. Wait, you ate? I don't. What? What? You ate a year old popcorn? Yeah. It's not the worst thing you could eat. Like I was, oh, it was man. like Saturday night. I was watching a uh, tsunami with went back when they had Samurai Seven, and I was like, I need to eat something. I guess I'll get this popcorn. And that's all. It wasn't very good. Get this popcorn. Get I, this bread. I hate that so weird better. bag of popcorn. I think it's caramel popcorn. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Those chips. I hate those. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted what? to put that out there. I want to see if anyone else shares my podcast? hatred. It, it, it's, honestly, it's just us talking. Things, like... things I hate. So anyway, in betweens are. So that's animation. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. In between yeah, frames. I, I, I oh, know that. Oh, Dip oh, shit. guys! I saw. Okay, also out of the loop. I did watch another documentary. It's called Enter the Anime on Netflix. Isn't that one really bad? It is fucking bad because this. Okay, let me tell you about this fucking documentary. It's about some lady who's not into anime, and she's like, "Huh, I want to find out what is anime." And look at this. Look at Japan. How can such a reserved c- country make such crazy cartoons? This is so weird. And it's just this lady who's just, I don't know, so sheltered that she can't fathom that a. Uh, another race of people has different interests. It's, it's almost like, it's like extreme white privilege. It's almost like something from the nineties, like a documentary from the nineties where they would say like Japanimation. It's very, Oh, I remember when people used to call it Japanimation. Oh, it's cooler than anime. Yeah. (laughs) Doesn't, doesn't Chris Stuckman still call it that or something? (laughs) Does he? Or he's like referred to like back in the Japanimation era. Oh, <laughs> don't don't do that. Yeah, that's what that is. But like, if you want to I mean, just like feel shame, just watch Enter the Anime on Netflix. It's just, 
I, I don't know. I feel like this woman would have like an aneurysm if she found out, like if she met just an Asian person who wasn't good at math, she'd be like, whoa, aren't you supposed to be good at that? It's so crazy. I'm going to make this a documentary. <sighs> it's... It's a you people are so embarrassing and need to be stopped. It's literally the documentary. Watch it. It's this lady's just I don't know. DuckTales season three started up again. Tell us about that since you apparently watched it. I did. It's pretty good. Um, there's an episode where they um, they did a reference to Quack Pack Yay. and the DuckTales movie. Wow. All in the same episode. Wow. Very, very. Um, Adventurous? No, that's not the word I'm looking for. I've swatched one episode of Quack Pack, and that was enough. That that was way enough. Yes, that yeah. that is a, the most accurate statement I'm going to hear on this podcast. Yeah, it's on Disney Plus. If you all want to suffer with that too. But the Quack, uh, the Quack part of the episode. Yeah, apparently. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, anyway, sorry. Talk about uh, the plot of the episode of Ducktales is, or for the, it's the second episode of the third season, and uh, it's a '90s themed sitcom style where they're trapped in a '90s sitcom, and it's being controlled by the genie from the lamp uh, movie. Ooh, yeah, and Goofy's that. in it for some reason in the Goof Troop outfit. <laughs> By the way, Powerline and Roxanne are canon in the DuckTales series. Whoa, so, did, you know. wait, it, will this finally explain why they broke up in the second, well, why she wasn't in the second film, Extremely Goofy Movie? Uh, I don't know. No. It, it has to appear again. They fucking make better. I mean, this could be their chance to finally, like, uh, tie all the loose ends. Like, why wasn't Roxanne in the second movie? Did, did, did they break up? What, what happened? Man, can we just take a moment to appreciate that Roxanne was a lot of furry people's awakening? Yeah, true death. She was great. I I remember when I was a kid, like, uh, did I tell this story where I, where basically Goof Troop was playing on TV and I was like, oh shit, gotta watch Goof Troop. And I ran to the TV, except I tripped and hit my forehead on the metal frame of my bed and I had to go to the hospital. Oh, wow. Wait, so is all of this your dream on the way to the hospital? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no, is this real? Is there no YouTube? Is it all? Well, okay, if I do wake up at that hospital and it's like I'm back to like being a five-year-old, I'll I'll have plenty of experience saying, okay, guys, I got some ideas. I got this idea for YouTube. <laughs> Listen to me. Okay. I, I got... Jim, do not try and turn the continuity of this podcast into St. Elmo. Sweet. <laughs> Saint, I like... That you called it Saint Elmo, and now I'm imagining the Sesame Street parody yeah. of all this. Is it not Saint Elmo's? I think Saint Elsewhere. Saint, Saint Elsewhere. Oh, okay. Saint Elsewhere. <laughs> but I want the. I know. See, if it was now, Sesame Street would have a parody and it'd have puns and criticisms about the the show or movie. I watch a lot of Sesame Street. So. I, I clearly. <laughs> very, very into it. So. Which is mm. good. I you know. It's, it's great. It's a good show. Have you seen what the did I? I don't know if I mentioned this before, but did you see what the puppeteers have been doing during the pandemic? Uh, they've been making little shorts, right? Yeah, it's cool. Okay. We've been watching the Abby's Freeze Dance is a favorite, but also Elmo shows you how to self hug and stuff like that. I was like, wow, you guys really are the best. So you know, speaking of that, um, I feel like this pandemic because. Uh, I don't want to be like a like like a make bring the energy down, but like this thing's gonna last for like a couple of months, if no! not like like a year, based off of how like slow and pathetically we're reacting to it. Oh yeah, especially America, right? And so yeah. like uh, just because we're on the same track as like Italy, and I think we surpassed them at this point. And so yeah. like um, the thing that people will need when we're stuck in our homes is like entertainment and. That's kind of a hard thing to do when we're all quarantined. And so, like, I think now's the time for, like, some of the bigger studios to try to, like, do some kind of initiative of, like, one-man projects. Like, now animation is probably the best thing for America. <laughs> like, like not, oh. to, not to go all patriotic, like, the flag flies behind me, but, like, <laughs> it, it, the voice actors don't have to, like, you can send voice actors equipment. And they yeah. can record from home. Okay. Animators can work from remote. I know Jorge Gutierrez has been doing that, and I know certain a, a lot of animation productions have sort of been moving ahead pretty quickly, from what I've read. And people have suggested that animation this could be like a boom time, but 
um i mean we'll see i mean there's like articles that say this could go on for 18 months there's articles of saying i mean no one has a cure so to me it's like until there's a cure there's no you know who knows yeah. when the deadline what is. the but, um, fuck so when can i get some so, buffalo wings god damn it you know you can just order those right That's, like they, they have DoorDash. i know but it's like uh, do i want to touch that packaging i don't know oh my god just wear some gloves and oh. or wash your hands take them out of the thing wash your hands yeah, how do Can I know? Can you get the... like one of your servants from your YouTube money to like oh, come bring you God. chicken and make it? I wish. I don't know. How do I know it's not on the food itself, huh? So what have you been doing? Have yeah. you not been eating? <laughs> no, I got. Don't worry, I got my stockpile of uh, ramen noodles. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm doing okay. That was the most self-assured, <laughs> confident I have ever heard, Pan. <laughs> Like, do you have in your closet like a a, a pot, packs and packs of noodles and like yes. the, the the cheese the, the Cheetos from your the opening theme song of your videos and all that stuff? <laughs> all Someone that stuff. in the audience, I'm giving you guys homework. Draw a pan on his ramen noodle throne. <laughs> Look, Eat Cheetos with a, a two liter of what's your favorite soda pan? Um, Surge Fanta Lime. There we go. There you have your instructions. Please. Please add no. us. Make Do us it. proud. Yeah. Come on. Get, come on. <laughs> I, 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 want, I want to see my phone blow up with Twitter mentions all Tuesday. So my wife's like, what is going on? <laughs> hey, look, remember the good days when you can go out to eat? I remember. Oh, man. Like, so, so, okay. I had surgery and then I was stuck in the house for like two weeks straight. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, I've been high on painkillers for those two weeks. And then the moment that I like. I like get off of them and I'm able to be a functioning person again. They announced that restaurants are closing, but like you're no longer allowed to have yeah. that. And it feels like the walking dead. Like I just came out of a car and now the world destroyed. Oh yeah. no. I pregame this pandemic for two weeks. <laughs> I like that you say you pregame it. I'm really lonely. Pan. Has Pan. anyone I'm talked? Sorry. I'm curious. Like, has anyone talked to those doomsday prepper guys? Like, what are they up to? Uh, I know this one guy, and he has a thing in the bottom of his house. And then this girl kind of just drove up to his farm. And anyway, and never mind. It's a ten Cloverfield Lane joke. <laughs> oh, like, it, I, I was, it's a I was, I was like, I was like, I can't describe this movie. It's been a little bit. It was a good movie though. I should rewatch it. Ten Cloverfield Lane. Pretty cool. Yeah. But anyway, better than Cloverfield. I'll Ooh. die on that hill. Oh wow! Whoa. That's, a, that's, a, that's a bold statement. Uh, like I, th I, I think it's better than N Cloverfield Paradox. Uh, Fight me. Everything's okay, better that than that. That one's not so bold. <laughs> Yeah, like, look, I've been wanting another Cloverfield, and it's like, this has nothing to do with that. I don't want to watch 10 Cloverfield Lane. I haven't, oh, I still it? haven't watched it. Where's oh, the other cool. nine? I know we got one. Where's yeah. two through eight Cloverfield? I've, I've heard people <laughs> make that joke. They, they should, it would have been cool because they're the only time, liter like, in film history, other than, like, I think it's just Tales from the Crypt, and, because there were two of those, I think and Cloverfield Lane that have successfully launched like an anthology horror franchise and everyone who tries to do that fails and it's pretty cool that they succeeded for three movies I sort of wanted them to keep they going, succeeded because but... they just got some random ass movie and slapped Cloverfield on it no that, I mean I that's what like... they did with the, both the sequels so I feel like Halloween could have worked if they didn't do a sequel immediately after the first one oh yeah, yeah. I I think the problem with that is also that Halloween hit and then it was it influenced all these people to make these slasher movies, you know, like mm -hmm. Friday the 13th. And then Friday the 13th immediately was like part two, part three, like year after year, something like that, and all of the other ones. And so I think there's a couple of years between the first Halloween, Halloween 2, because the studio was like, you need to make Halloween 2, look what you've inspired. And so when they get to Halloween 3, there's a precedent that Halloween, Halloween influence, but didn't set. So they have to like meet this precedent that they started, but they don't agree with. So that's right. what ruined, because three is, is, it's a cool idea. It's not a great movie, but it's a cool idea. I wish it had worked, but right. well, that, I that can... audience wasn't into that. They wanted to see Michael Myers again. I don't know. I would be so into it. And off, you know, like every year, part of this movie franchise, a Halloween movie during Halloween. 
Yeah. Like, you know? Just, just get a different director story, slap a name on it. You'd be fine. But, I mean, Saw worked that way for like 10 years or something. Yeah, but um, there's only like two good Saws. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I need to, I've never really gone too far into the Saw. I think I'm more of a Final Destination guy than a Saw. Which I'm more I know of a Leprechaun person. <laughs> Leprechaun person. I like that. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, wait, Pan, you're into Final Destination. Are Nesca's into oh, Final Destination? Yeah, we uh, watched the whole series together. All epis- all of them. And I think my favorite favorite are uh, either five or two. Yeah, two's high up there. I, 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 I have certain nostalgia for one. But. Yeah. Two's good. But like the, four, guys- the fourth one, the 3D one, it's like, wow, they blatantly wanted you to know it was in 3D and it looks horrendous. All 3D things look terrible. Yeah, right. back in 2010, the 3D gimmick. Well, other than Piranha 3D, I, I'll stand up for Piranha 3D. <laughs> oh, well, obviously Spy Kids 3D is an exception oh, to the rule as well. Oh, yeah. There, 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 were, some, there were some good ones, but it, it was even worse when you went to see them in theaters and you'd be like, well, this is the only one that works in my schedule, so I'll pay the th- two extra dollars because, you know. And then there'd be like one good shot in 3D. That would mm-hmm. last maybe thirty seconds, and you'd be like, "Wow, that was cool." The rest of this sucks. Or um, Green Lantern in three D had an oh. interesting look to it because all the special effects just look like like models <laughs> and stuff, like toys, kind of. But like when I've rewatched it outside of three D, it doesn't have that effect because the depth isn't there, so it didn't. Also, that movie's garbage. So. Yeah. Do you think? Um... Oh, wait, do they still have 3D like in theaters? Occasionally, oh, yeah, they do. But I okay. try to avoid them as much as I can. I mean, I don't, I don't pay the extra three bucks for it, so I just, I just haven't thought about it in forever. I'm like, wait, do they? I mean, they still have it. Um, I feel like maybe this will take it out, which would be very nice. But what I usually do is I'll, I'll keep my 3D glasses and then I'll pay for a 2D movie and just go into the 3D because. I can't. I don't want to pay for that. So, you know, maybe that's shitty. Sorry. Yeah. But fucking you know, 3D there, there, ruined every, everything. Every like dread in 3D was pretty cool. Like there, every now and then there'd be a good 3D movie, but there's so few and far between. Have any of you tried D box? No. Okay. What's that? Oh, it's where uh, you watch a movie and the and your chair shakes and. I, I've tried it with a few movies, and the only time it's only it's ever been good was for Jurassic World and um, Hardcore Henry, and that's it. Everything else was just like, well, this is kind of pointless. I, I want to do that whenever the next Fast and Furious comes out. I, <laughs> I, just, just to do it, because there is a theater in New York that does it. Um, but it's like, it's I've done it in like a demonstration sort of thing. It was only like 15 minutes, and it was like, this is fun, but I'm more into the gimmick of it than actually watching what's going on so i don't know mm-hmm. i don't know it seems weird like would you really want like oh no we're driving and it's like bumpy and you're like ah my butt what's going on <laughs> it's i want smell a vision damn it oh yeah no we gotta we gotta pay john waters to do that yeah or Odorama. i want to know when iron man farts okay like very important you know i realize since i'm wearing my plague gear because all of these thick gloves on and like all the, you know, uh, a scarf on my face, all this stuff. When I take all that stuff off, my hands are all sweaty. I was like, man, these superheroes much reek after they take off their suits. It must be like, whoa, holy crap. Did you ever see the uh, Batman can't stop talking about sex college humor skit? No, I didn't see that. Because there's a point where it's like, uh, it, it bas- the joke is like, hey, I, um, I'm i the bad guy, but we had sex. And then he keeps like talking about it. And it's like, but like suit sex I, I i i run around in a rubber suit really seals in the flavor <laughs> what <don't know>. oh, <laughs> i need to i love i like college humor when it was still there yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. r.i.p they're a 90s time travel skit i i both think is hilarious and brings up uh like a really interesting point about 90s time travel this is a good skit <laughs> But uh, we got some questions if y'all wanted. I put in the recording chat. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol from Big Cat Rescue. And I cheated on my math test. 
Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol from Big Cat Rescue. And I stole from my mom's purse. All these questions suck. Oh. Why is a pan such a sucker for golf girls? Always. <laughs> wow, what a what a funny joke. <laughs> Here's here's one a uh, question uh, since it's Adventure Time's 10th anniversary at the time of this recording favorite episode from the series Oh uh, they're playing that today again <laughs> But hmm. what Adventure Time Yeah what's your favorite episode uh, from that show Hang on I got to think about that that's this is a tough question someone go first <sighs> God, it's been so long since I've seen it. I mean, I wasn't like a, I wasn't as big a, into Adventure Time as I was with regular show, but I can tell you what my favorite regular show episode was. Yeah, I don't, re I don't remember Adventure Time too well. Um, um, I'm actually with Pan. I'm, I'm probably a bigger fan of regular show. Was uh, a big deal for me. Any so episode? Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Screw Adventure Time. We're talking about regular. Any show. episode with Marceline is my favorite. I like the ginger yeah, that's it. That's episode. it. What, what was missing was my favorite because it was just a Princess Bubblegum, Marceline, Finn, and Jake adventure, and they they have great chemistry with each other. Yeah, it's certain. I like the one with Donald Glover. It was uh, the male Marceline. Mm -hmm. That's the seat. Yeah, that's the sequel episode. Yeah, um, I like that one. I recently watched a bunch of those, and those the Fiona and Cake stuff holds up really well. Um, there's a, I can't think of all the good because there's a, I need to rewatch that. Because it's been like a while since I was really into it. Hmm. It wasn't around I, I, the time this podcast started. It sort of fell off a bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were mad and we just made a podcast to explain why we were mad. So we really... personally destroyed Adventure Time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry if we singled anybody out Ooh. on that. Ha -ha. Oops. I mean, think without Adventure Time, there'd be no pizza party. Podcast. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. no, it's true. We, there wouldn't be. Either that or, I mean, if it wasn't for Symbiotic Titan, I wouldn't have met Pan. So who's to say if we wouldn't have had Pizza Party made under different circumstances? Like, I want to live in a world where we, like, uh, started Pizza Party under the prospect of talking about, like, problem solvers or something. <laughs> I do not like, want to think of the alternate reality where we're the Breakfast Bagel podcast. So Pan would, bagel. Pan would have been, like... New York bagel instead of pan pizza. Maybe is, uh, I'm eating pizza yeah, regardless. It's pizza party because it's themed after pan. Yeah, and pizza. it all comes so, from like, my. So like, if it was ba breakfast bagel, it would have had to be like. Uh, pan would have had to be like, big bagel. Bagel boy. Ba yeah. Bagel boy. Bagel boy. Yeah, you all come from. Pan, my you should you should have done that for April Fool. Next year's April Fools, you should be a uh, bagel boy. You all come from my cheese, but I just but look, I don't want to do April Fools. If I'm gonna do something fucking weird, I'm I'm not gonna do it on April Fools because otherwise, what's the point? Okay. Everyone's gonna know it's a joke. Fuck that. I want people to have, have that mystery of like, is he fucking serious or not? Nobody knows. I mean, I All guess. Right. Yeah. Won't they know in the next video isn't that thing anymore? Yeah, who knows? Just just leave the mystery out there. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I announced I was trans, and there was still, like, three months of people being like, wait, she was serious? So people can be kind of dense. I mean, what I want, I want, like, movie studios to announce, like, their controversial reboots or movies or whatever on April Fool's and have people think, oh, it's just a joke. And then, <laughs> you know, months later, they realize, oh, no, it wasn't a joke at all. They were serious. There was a few, like, stealth announcements or, like, sort of announcements I saw where people were like, "You, this better be real. Or I'm going to get angry. Like, yeah. uh... Like a there was a Ducktales game that like came out and like the, the showrunners like please make this real please make this real <laughs> oh. <laughs> please yeah licensed games are dead these are kind of kind of no, not we, good questions not we got Samurai Jack wait Samurai Jack asked us a question Samurai Jack has a licensed game pan's like oh licensed oh. games are oh that's games. like one or two I mean like I mean imagine all the like big blockbuster movies that came out in the past few years like where's their video games huh it's i mean i guess hotel transylvania and that's it got a game jumanji got oh, a game right on that's Switch. two i'm not playing that game i'll get sucked in <laughs> oh shit <laughs> yeah 
I, I recently watched um, Jumanji Next Level, the the se- sequel sequel. Yeah. I, I like I like them. Like I know they're not like the the Robin Williams movie, but I kind of like them being their own little thing, and they're enjoyable enough. Yeah, the first the one's first, fine. The first one I think had the uh, novelty of like me thinking it wasn't going to be good, and then mm-hmm. it surprised you. But I think the second one didn't have that. But I, I didn't see the second one. So I, don't I did see the second one, and they 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 kind of jumped into a bunch of world building things. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's heavily implied that the villain of the second one is actually another Avatar character, like another player that's still been in the game forever. Oh. And I think that's really fascinating. Hmm. Um, there, there's a lot of, like, somewhat unanswered questions, and they added in some elements, like, if they all jump in these glowing water, they could swap players. Like, they could swap who they are. Um, and then, like... Well, I heard that part was really funny with the actors doing yeah. and stuff. I enjoyed it. Like, it's not like amazing. It's, you know, it's not like cinematic masterpieces, but like, as far as like films to watch to put on when you're bored, it's, yeah. it's an enjoyable experience. No, the first one was like a really good uh, family movie, I, mm-hmm. I would say, because like, there were parts like, I mean, I don't have a kid who's old enough who would want to watch it, but there were part, like, you could watch it. It's not inappropriate. And you still, it was still like an entertaining movie. You know, it was like they really nailed that first one and it's also because i was like there's no way you can get this to work and i think you know but maybe mm-hmm. the second one still at least i mean it was entertaining enough i would rewatch the first one again by the chance uh the second one uh because they added danny devito into it too yeah and uh like um i don't know the, the the four main actors being able to swap between who they're personating um while some are kind of not as good like jack black doing a valley girl thing is not the greatest thing ever yeah. um i mean it's funny from concept for like a moment but like long lasting so in the sequel when like he's played by like four people instead uh and you get to see a little bit of range that's really fun uh, but the third one, it's heavily implied by the end credit scene that they're going to do. Uh, the game comes out into the real world. Oh, that's not. I don't know if I'm as into that. Eh. But that's the literally the Robin Williams movie. Yeah. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. I think, I think after that one, they're oh, done. Oh man, are they going to make a CG Robin Williams to like close the loop? You know. I think they're the estate is actually. Re- Anyway, not that I'm sure that was a joke, but I know I think for real there is the the state's against anything. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, no, that's good. Well, because like, oh man, uh, because I follow Zelda Williams on like Twitter, Mm -hmm. and like occasionally, you know, she's like, I just did some spring cleaning thanks to the pandemic, and I found these a bunch of her dad, and it's that heartbreaking. Oh, but uh, you guys want to go into the other questions? If there are any, good um, ones. I guess sure. there's a lot of like, am I okay? Wogglebug okay. says, "What have you been doing okay. to keep yourself busy in the quarantine?" Masturbating. Hey, yeah, I, I jack off like two Awful. times a day. Only two? I'm up to eight. Uh, I wish I had. I wish I had the stamina for la, that. La, la, la. I also share an apartment, so it's like I share it with two other people, oh, no. but they work. They, ha- they they're essential workers. They work at a grocery store. Well, then yeah, like fuck. Well, plus, don't, don't you ever need like a cool down? Like once you like fucking burst, you're like, oh, man, I need a minute before I can like before get a rational thought again. kicks. Oh, in. no, if I stop, it's done. You don't really feel anything until after the seventh one, to be well, honest. Well, like that's the only time I can feel alive again. I wish I, I wish I had that stamina. Fuck. So I so, um, yeah. What are you guys? Well, doing? I've been playing Mortal Kombat 11. Yes, it is like a basic. No, bitch. it's look, I. I Ouch. liked it way better than I thought it would. Granted, I haven't played a Mortal Kombat game since um, what's it called uh, Deadly Alliance on PS2, but I really love this, and it just like floods you with cosmetics, and I'm like, yes, I need to unlock this fucking outfit that looks tacky as hell for Johnny Cage, this this pink and baby blue looking outfit. I don't know. It's great. Pan, I can agree it's- with you. Unlocking costumes for characters is one of the most satisfying things in video games, and I am so sad that's no longer like a real thing. No, anymore. aside from MK11 and Mario Odyssey, you don't really see Hypercharge it. Hypercharge Unbox has plenty of cosmetics for your uh, action figure character. I'm downloading yeah, it right yeah. now. Play Hypercharge Unboxed. Woo-hoo. But yeah, Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, the story just ends on a real 
well, that happened. So I guess we'll start over. Reboot mm. time. That's half of them, though. Um, if you like that one, I recommend playing Mortal Kombat without a, like, not the first one, but the remake. Which, like, the... nine? Um, oh, well, that's, yeah, that's I nine. Think... The the one that starts all over on PS3. Yeah, like, it, like, starts over, but doesn't. Like, it, it's, it's a like soft a reboot, reboot. But not. Yeah, we. There's time travel, is what I'm trying to say. Like, they go back in the past and redo all first game but it's different yeah. because raiden has memories oh, man. But by, by the time this podcast comes out like i think that that uh so, that scorpion animated movie by warner brothers will come out on street to video like i'm i'm excited for that because i've been yearning for another mortal Kombat thing and also i found out in 2021 they're gonna release a mortal Kombat movie but apparently this the release schedule as of now is january so I'm, it's gonna be a real fuck you it's january movie i'm not expecting much from it <laughs> It's probably not coming out. I mean, January. they finished filming last it's year, so, weird. so I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, who who know, uh, who knows? Because they're moving stuff no. around so much. If it, if it's like the uh, original one where it's really corny but has like actual fatalities, then like fuck yeah. it, why not? Like me. I mean, we'll, we'll see. It's everything's getting moved so much, and I mean, you know, mm-hmm. sorry, not to be the Debbie Downer. But best case scenario, it'll this will. This podcast has been Debbie Donner. Best case fuck. scenario, it'll be like a, a like a low budget film that that tries its best and actually becomes decent. That's what I'm hoping for. What what studio? Uh, made it? I don't know. Hang on, maybe it's Warner Brothers since they own Mortal Kombat. Uh, maybe they're just they'll just be like HBO oh, Max, baby. Yeah, man. Okay, so like one of the things that upsets me the most is that like this guy did like a fan film of Mortal Kombat, like couple of years ago maybe like well probably now like more closer to a oh. decade and he reimagined mortal Kombat to not be about supernatural stuff instead it was about a bunch of serial killers that had like specific like things that you know yeah. like reptile was a person that was a cannibal but had like a skin disease that made it look like he has scales and stuff yeah it was and so they oh, kind of oh it was called ahead. mortal Kombat rebirth and it was like supposed to be an official thing right like it what was about- super cool what about Mortal Kombat Unheard? <laughs> oh. So, but so this particular f- fan film was so cool, and then like the Mortal Kombat people like liked it, and they hired him to do like a web series. But they're like, but sorry, you have to make it like the actual games. Defeating the whole point. Like I like, I was it, so excited for what? it because it was a new take. Was it like the actual games? Because I remember it just feeling like a essentially like Suicide Squad, but even edgier. Uh, essentially, like they they had to incorporate Nether Realm and like all the supernatural elements. So like it had the gritty realism of the reboot, but like took away the groundedness huh. of it, which was the most unique thing. Because uh, I just wanted to see what all their interpretations of all the different Mortal Kombat characters and how they could make them into yeah. humans. Because like a uh, freaking reptile is just uh they have the har- Harlequin disease. Don't look that up, but essentially means you have your skin uh born inside out that's a real Ooh. thing that sucks and it's called apparently yeah uh, you, you might not want to l- go ahead let's up. let's see nolan look that up and here is reaction all right let's see let's see it's not well, that bad i don't know apparently i don't know yeah they just kind of look like they were left out in the sun for too long. Oh, yeah, long. but that's Reptile, apparently. Because, well, like, this this uh, Mortal Kombat Rebirth pilot, at first, when I saw it, uh, like, the day I graduated high school, I was like, damn, this is cool. And then years later, I was like, damn, this is stupid. And But now I'm like, you know what? I'm going back to saying, yeah, this is, this is a fun idea. I'm fun with this weird offshoot that never went anywhere, sadly. And I recall Mortal Kombat Legacy, the web series that came from it, is was pretty meh it was it was like a web yeah. series and had like a budget of ten dollars it's not that good hmm. yeah it's just the humanizing it to have it lower budget but also exploring a new universe was cool but then like when you just try to do the games but shittier yeah. i don't know i it was one of the biggest letdowns i ever had well like getting super excited about a concept yeah. and then but the good th- the good thing is the not. games are already so cinematic that it's like what's the point of even having a movie well at least it's a movie that's similar to, to true. that at least do something different like when it comes to video game movies i always see things like imagine s- 
trying to make a video game based off the PS4 Spider-Man. That'd be pointless to, like, cram a 15-hour game into two hours. But you can still take the characters and do something different with them and rearrange their thing, you Wasn't, know? Is it like Dragon Kombat? Slayer? Maybe. I don't know. Isn't Mortal Kombat just based on Enter the Dragon? Shush. So it's like, how could you... Yes, it is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it was... I think it was like a... No. I'm trying to remember. It was what? like based off that, and they took a lot of inspiration from uh, Big Trouble Little China. Yeah. Oh, no, definitely. With yeah. that one character. But I don't know if you could do... Like, if you just made Enter the Dragon again, like, are you going to do better than Enter the Dragon? Ooh. I don't think so. No. And if they just follow the game's plot, are they just going to redo uh, MK9 in live action? Yeah. I mean, Jim Cotta is also sort of a remake of Enter the Dragon, but I don't think anyone Ooh. wants that. So. Yeah. Do you know no, Jim Cotta? Not... Have you ever watched that? Who that? I, I, I've seen it on Red Letter The only Media Kung Fu movie I it. watched is Chopsaki yeah. Chooks. No, it's like a, it's a, a gymnast who has to like go and fight in this game of death. Mm -hmm. It was like an Olympic gymnast who they thought would be a movie star. And it's like really bizarre because he's clearly not a martial arts star, but he'll like get on balance beam type things in any situation and like start kicking. Like it's very weird. Hmm. But yeah. Okay, this is kind of a silly question, but um, where, was it? where did it go? It was asking what color, what color, it's dumb, but what color Power Ranger suit would you have and what role Yellow. would you be on the team if we were a Power Ranger? Uh, you, you know those beetles with like the like reflective colored shells that kind of is like white, but also a bit rainbow? The beetle boards? Yeah, he's just, he's just, so we're all Power Rangers, and no one's just a Beetleborg. See, I yeah. think I would give a fuck. It, I would, I would think I would be red, but I'd probably just be blue. Blue's a good color, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would want the black one, but I think you know I can't do that. So they, they don't, they don't color code yeah. those by race anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> then I'll do the black one. They stopped doing that after, uh, like, in space. <laughs> Whoops! No, they got they got woke yeah. after they went to space. <laughs> They're like, this doesn't look good. I don't know. But I like to think I'd be pink or purple. They've had both of those now. I said and yellow, so we got a yellow and then purple and what else? Guess I'm black. No one's a <laughs> this is such a mish mishmash <laughs> of different shapes. We don't even have a red ranger. Wait, no, there's no we're, leader. We're on our own. No, <laughs> Yeah, you don't need it. Nope. You don't need a Red Ranger. Oh, I have a what? I have a question I liked that I saw in here. It said, if you could revive a canceled slash shelved animated movie like Popeye or Gigantic, hmm. which would you pick? It doesn't have to be Popeye. I, let's say not Popeye or Gigantic. I'm curious what uh, Lauren Foss's Medusa would have been. I wonder if there's any oh, concept anywhere. I, I actually... Been fine. I can't I would, think of anything. I, would, I guess I would, Popeye... Fuck it. I would throw out there uh, the cats that oh, Amblin was yeah. going to make. I'm still curious. Eh. Quality. Eh. Can I just save the Mortal Kombat yeah, yeah. web series? <laughs> Look, I, I'm i fine if we just continue about. this podcast and just talk about Mortal Kombat because I've been big into that. I've been watching like a whole bunch of videos of like 10 things you didn't know about Frost or fucking MoCap or whoever. <laughs> Can you do a video on the the really crappy Mortal Kombat cartoon oh, that aired I in like, the to, 90s? I want to, but it's like, I feel like everyone's already covered that, so I don't know. I've been thinking about it. I feel like no one's covered it in forever to the point where you Maybe. would bring like, I, did, I, to I was, it. I had a lot of fun covering the uh, Darkstalkers cartoon, another fighting game. Yeah, my only disappointment <laughs> is Ke Killer Instinct never got a uh, shitty cartoon. I mean, like, Killer Instinct basically had the art style of the Donkey Kong Country games, and... I'd imagine a video, a cartoon of that would just look like Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> I uh, I watched as a kid not Mortal Kombat but Double Dragons. Oh, I, Did you ever see that I cartoon? I watched people make uh, just the the best of scenes. Just uh, I don't know. There there was a YouTuber who's who turned out to be Matt McMuscles who would just like get all the dumbest clips of like all these video game cartoons and just p put them in <laughs> in a supercut and it's like wow the '90s were weird for video games. 
Oh, so like there's a scene that I really want to mention because it, it's just the one that sticks with me the most. It's that Jimmy and Billy, they both look exactly like it's one of those like Sailor Moon thing where they wear pretty much identical to their super form. They're powered up for where it's just like they just have like a mask on, but they have their same outfit and then like some metal put onto it. And then their car, their car is the same, except for the the hood dragon face pops up. And now it's the <laughs> dragon car, right? And apparently no one can tell the difference between those two people. But there's an episode where this guy, they pick up a hitchhiker. Um, and then like he turns out to be also a armored okay. superhero guy, too. Uh, and at the end of the episode, they're driving him home as all superhero. He goes, I know who you are, Billy and Jimmy Lee. What? It's because you left your fishing gear in the back. Not anything <laughs> else, just the fishing gear. I mean, okay, first off, is this cartoon teaching kids it's a good idea or a bad idea to, like, pick up hitchhikers? Should the incident occur, was... you know? I don't, yeah. I don't know if they took a stance, to be honest. I yeah, think it was a non-political like, cartoon. We don't care about hitchhikers. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. 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 They were trying to help this guy. But would you guys pick up a hitchhiker? Uh, depends. Have you? Has no, anyone here? God, no. I'm not gonna. I want to live. No. No. Oh. I'm, I'm, no I'm sure it's fine if then. you get picked up by a truck, or you can trust them. <laughs> that is the reverse of I mean, what it doesn't. Do, that okay. Pee Wee's Herman's movie doesn't count. Okay. I was thinking I'm, more of Jim James. Is, Jim, Jim so is insinuating that he has hitchhiked before, so Ergo mm -hmm. has more experience than us on the matter. So the, the only times I have the people pick me up have had long conversations with me, have said they knew me, despite the fact that I do not remember them, were clearly very inebriated times I got, but I had to walk from their house because they said, oh, you're close enough. And I don't, and I was like, okay, yeah. that's fine. I mean, it's a free ride. Technically that. speaking, wouldn't like Ubering and lifting be kind of hitchhiking? Like what is the yeah, definition? It's, it's, well, if you're, hitchhiking is if you're not paying. For it. It's, hitchhiking is as if you stick your hand out. Yeah. They pick you up. They give you a ride for free. That's hitchhiking. Uh, I have to show my leg. Yeah, I've you. Seen, would... I've seen enough cartoons to know that, like, I have to show my leg where. Thing. What? Like, like there's a thing. Like, like, uh, like uh, your toes on the ground, heel up, and you twist your leg. Is like a, a way to get, like get a car to just immediately stop. Yeah, I mean, I've seen on, the Joker do it. About this. No, you're. Sp I mean, that's that was that comes from a uh, this movie. What is it? It happened one night, and that movie, what who Clark Gable plays, a lot of what he did inspired Bugs Bunny. Ah. So anyway, or so they say. Who knows? Maybe that's a lot. Do you think there's a hitchhiker? What? In the list? I know you know who does hitchhike for real is John Waters. He uses it the the country. So there are people who still do it. They say it's dangerous. It doesn't make you feel the greatest because you don't know who's going to pick you up. So. I don't know. The last person to hitchhike famously was the <laughs> oh, that no! robot, and he had destroyed. Hitchbot. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. But I feel like that's because, like, <laughs> people like, oh, it's a robot. It doesn't him. matter. Well, I think he made. I think he made his way through Canada, but once he got to Philadelphia, like, oh. yes, <laughs> sounds about right. Oh. Philadelphians fucking. We suck. gotta bring Hitchbot, like his like uh, successor on the podcast. You know, we we can bring him on. He's he's free. I bet. I want a sequel where he gets married because he's what? A oh my god! What if there's another Hitchbot outside and nobody's picked him up because nobody's you know going outside? Oh no. <laughs> What if there were secretly two robots, one on one oh. side of the world, the other one, and the oh man, gather some get hitched. Ooh, and they use Will Smith oh, to bring oh, them together. Oh wait, He's oh god, hitched. guys, that just reminds wow. me of a terrible story from Element from a uh, middle school. Okay, so um, <sighs> okay, so every every year at our middle school, we had to like go to like some forest, no, uh, some field, and plant a whole bunch of trees in a field, and um. I don't know. Nobody wanted mm -hmm. to do it. It was on a it was a field trip on a Saturday morning, and it was like God, fuck this. And we had to. I don't know. They said we'd get 
worse grades or whatever if we don't do it. But they told us this story about how it, we had to plant all these trees. That way these two rhinos that are living in the most southern point of Texas can, like, walk towards each other and save their species. And uh, I, rem I remember years later, like, this is basically like when I was, like, 25 and I was, like, telling this to someone and they were like, bro... There's no rhinos in South Texas. <laughs> and I realized, wait a minute, they're fucking right. I was fucking bamboozled. <laughs> wait, wait, I hold on. They bamboozled a bunch of 12 year olds by saying like, look, here's what you're going to do Saturday. You're going to make up this yes. field so two rhinos can fuck. <laughs> yes. And you look, I didn't that. think about it. We were like 12. We, it was just like, it's a love story about two animals that needed to save their species. It was like the movie Rio. I mean, it's it's a better, oh. it's still a better romance than Twilight. But, uh, sorry, uh, I just like that with the teacher that cooked up that was probably baking it up as they went along, and like the other teachers just stood up and go, <laughs> I mean, they bought it, so let's go with it. I was I fucking lied amazing. to, fuckers. Yeah. Or there's a baby rhino oh, out there named that's Rebel what a Taxi shitty Campina. name. That doesn't make sense. Okay, well, I don't know. They they could have just named it <laughs> That's Rebel That also pizza. sucks. That doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> Most rhinos deserve it. <laughs> taxi. How did you get to a good name with Sophie? I'm just curious. Did your wife oh. do that one? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Not surprising. I had a child named Wednesday once. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> What did you I do to this rhino? The, the rhino didn't exist to begin with. Wait a minute. You're just covering up the rhino. I see what you're doing. No, this is, this is like, proof. It wasn't real. <laughs> Unless maybe it was real and they died and we fucking failed them. We didn't go on enough field trips to save them. Fuck the real reforestation. That's what it was called, real reforest station. Like maybe somebody else who grew up in the most southern point of Texas also remembers that. Yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, this is this it. Is it was just a fucking lie. Alright. There were no rhinos. This no. podcast was a dream the entire time. And it you was. were there. No, this and is a you fresh were start. there. I wasn't actually. I'm fading away. I wasn't pointing at you. Wait, which one of the internet porn? Which one of the Wizard of Oz characters oh. are each of? Them? Um, I'm uh. Oh the shit! I'm witch. Dorothy in this. Yeah, yeah this? you're Dorothy. You're Dorothy. Um, I'll be the uh, Tin Man because I don't have a heart. I'll be the. I think I would be the Cowardly Lion. I, I feel like it, it also fits Pan. Yeah. You'd, You'd be the no. Pan is the cowardly lion. Jim is the scarecrow because he doesn't have a brain. Oh, no. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. But yeah, so uh, this was uh, the Wizard of Oz podcast. I'm the Tin Man. We've given you a lot of fan art ideas, so I don't. I want to see a lot of originality Yay. coming out of this. People <laughs> treating our fans like oh, a man. fucking like art sweatshop. Damn. Yeah, we need to, oh, we need yeah. to blow up that red bubble. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you draw oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I end the podcast by clicking Ooh. my heels together? <laughs> <laughs> There's no place like home. Oh, that's oh, good, no. Dorothy. That's the only place you're going for the next 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> you should have stayed down. They don't got no <laughs> corona there. Oh my God. Uh, I'm on my YouTube recommendations and I see a video <laughs> called Mortal Convid 19 and I'm like, I'm too, I want to know what the fuck this is. Fuck. <laughs> oh, man. Animation subscribe decks. immediately. Thanks. I'll be subscribing to them. Wait. Oh, yeah. Maybe animation the next decks. Podcast. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll watch we'll the see. video first and then if it's really bad. We gotta, no, please. No, that's not how this game works. <laughs> They're Please. On. Contact yes. us immediately. Please contact us. <laughs> and if, yeah. Oh, so where are you people? I'm Pan Pizza. And yeah. I just said and I'm the Tin that's Man. The I'm end, Dorothy. I think. Hi, I'm I'm Cosmodor Nintendo Jack Split. So. Yeah. I'm Saber Sparks. Fuck. I'm a furry. Right.
<laughs> Deuces. Talk to y'all later. Quarantine. Quarantine. Why, why couldn't it have been quarantine 19? <laughs>